Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Bank Shop Breakdown. We're going to go over five college basketball games for Saturday, February 10th, 2024. Now, if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your college basketball picks in the comment section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my college basketball bank shop best bet, you can find this at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. There's also a link in the description. Alrighty, let's go. Here are the games for the loaded Saturday card in college basketball. First up, we see Gonzaga and Kentucky. This one's going to be a 4 p.m. Eastern start time. It's going to be on CBS. Interesting matchup here. We don't see too many non-conference games at this point in the season, especially between programs like Gonzaga and Kentucky. But nonetheless, you know, this is an important game for both teams. I'd say a lot more important for Gonzaga, a team that has a solid record, 17-6, 8-2 in conference play, and 22nd in Kempom. You know, they're solid, uh, you know, metrics, but they're certainly on the outside looking in right now when it comes to the NCAA tournament and bracketology. I mean, they just they lack those statement wins. They've, they've had a few opportunities against Purdue and UConn and St. Mary's, but they weren't able to pick up those W's. And now they're certainly, you know, they're not even in the next four out there. They're in the hunt, but they're, they're not really right now in the bubble, I would say. And a game like this, a win at Kentucky could certainly help uh, Gonzaga's chances if they're not able to win that West Coast tournament. So, you know, if they win this game and run the table in the rest of the regular season, they'd have a decent chance. And I think Gonzaga, more so in this game than the other ones against Purdue, UConn, St. Mary's, match up pretty well here. And I think the difference is, St. Mary's, Purdue, UConn, all top 15 defenses in the country. Gonzaga can't really, you know, match up well with those types of teams, in my opinion. But against Kentucky, a team that's really struggling defensively, ranked 102 in the nation in just a defensive efficiency. Not a good defensive rebounding team, takes too many fouls, doesn't force a lot of turnovers, struggling to defend the perimeter, ranked 117th in three-point defense, and not really in the best of form, losing three of their last five games, including the losses against South Carolina. I think this is actually a decent spot for Gonzaga. I think this is the type of matchup they'd want to have at this point in the season in a must-win game. And you know, Gonzaga has a big advantage on the glass in this one, top 60 in both offensive and defensive rebounding percentage. Gonzaga, a decent three-point defense, which is important against Kentucky. We know this team takes a lot of threes. They make them at a, good, a pretty good rate, but sometimes they take too many bad shots. And we saw it against Florida and down the stretch in that game against the Gators. We saw it against South Carolina, saw it against Tennessee. And I think we see it here against Gonzaga in a must-win situation. I'm going to take this Gonzaga Bulldogs here, plus the points. Next up, we see Georgia and Arkansas. This one's going to be a 6 p.m. Eastern start time. It's going to be on the SEC Network. You know, for how much this has been a disaster season for Arkansas, I still don't think Georgia's doing much better on the other side. I mean, they're on a four-game losing streak, and I watched that game against Mississippi State. Just not really a pretty ugly offensive game plan there for the Bulldogs. I mean, this is a team that relies a lot on getting to the free throw line and making really tough low percentage three-point jumpers. And that was the case against Mississippi State. They took a ton of threes in that game, 33 threes. They made 12 of them, so 36.4%. Yet they still lose that game by 13 points because their offense was just so one-dimensional. I mean, you got a guy like Russell Chiwa, one of the better front court members, honestly, in the conference, and they just did not utilize him much in that game. And they haven't been able, they haven't done that, you know, for most of the season. I don't like Georgia in this matchup. I can't get there with the Bulldogs. I mean, in that last game against Mississippi State, Georgia made, it looks like, 20 field goals, and they only had six assists on those 20 field goals, 30%. Not going to get it done in the SEC. I know Arkansas has been a disaster, like I said, but this is a team that plays a lot better at home. We saw them earn the outright W against Texas A&M at home. They they covered against Kentucky at home. They were competitive in that ball game. They don't have too many winnable games left on their schedule this season, but this is one of them. We know this team still has a lot of talent. They're going to be getting back Devontae Davis for this game. He's missed the last few games with an injury. And uh, I think that this is a good spot here for Arkansas to pick up a rare conference win. I can't trust Mike White and the Bulldogs on the road, especially because this is their second straight true road game. They only had a couple of days off in between that Mississippi State game and this one. While Arkansas had a whole week off to prepare for this matchup, give me Arkansas on this one. Next up, we see Kansas State and BYU, one of three late games that we're going to talk about for the Saturday card. This one, 10 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. We backed the Kansas State Wildcats last time out against Kansas, their rivals, and the Wildcats prevailed. They earned that uh, overtime outright W, 75-70, to 70, the final score. The fans were looking to storm the court, but the coaching staff said, no, 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 we're not storming the court. Let's act like we've been there before. And this is a program that, you know, Jerome Tang, one of the best overtime coaches in college basketball. I mean, if you see this game go to overtime, maybe take a little, you know, stab at Kansas State because I don't think Tang, Tang has lost an overtime game with Kansas State yet, but 
In this matchup, I don't think this game goes to overtime. I think BYU takes care of business. And this is a letdown spot for Kansas State. Coming off that big upset win over your rivals, now going on the road at BYU. You know, it's, it's not an easy place to play. It's an underrated place to play. BYU hasn't been the best of form. They've lost three of the last five games, but they play really good basketball at home. Fundamentally sound team, experienced roster, great uh, rebounding team. They, they don't really force too many turnovers, which bodes well for Kansas State, who has an issue turning the ball over. But I think shot quality-wise, BYU just a much better team here. And like I said, with Kansas State coming off that big emotional victory, I can't go with them in this spot. Give me BYU. I'm going to lay the points. Next up, we see Arizona and Colorado. This one's going to be a 10 p.m. Eastern start time. It's going to be on ESPN. Now, it is not easy playing in two straight true row games in this Pac-12 conference, and it is not easy playing in two straight true row games when those matchups were at Utah and Colorado. To add on to that, it's not easy to play in two straight true row games in this conference at Utah and Colorado when you only have one day off in between. And to wrap it all up, it is not easy to play in two straight true row games in this conference at Utah, Colorado, one day off in between when that first game at Utah was a triple overtime win. The emotions are all over the place for Arizona. This is also not a team that's been great on the road in general this season. Give credit to the to Arizona. You know, we took Utah in that game plus the points. It's a heartbreaker at the end. They had plenty of chances to cover or win the game outright, but Arizona got the job done, but I can't back them in this spot. Situationally, this is a great matchup for Colorado, who is already known to be one of the best home teams in college hoops. They have not lost a game at home this season, and it's not just, like they're just not covering spreads either. They're also a really strong ATS team at home. They've got Arizona right where they want them. I think they get the outright W. Give me Colorado in this one. And the final game we're going to talk about for the Saturday card in college basketball is going to be the Mountain West as Boise State takes on Utah State. This one's going to be a 10 p.m. Eastern start time. It's going to be on Fox Sports 1. Utah State's lost two straight games. They lost to San Diego State and Nevada. One of those games on the road, the other one at home. Not a great loss at home against Nevada, I will say, but I think the Aggies bounce back here, and I like their chances to grab the win and cover Boise State, another one of those teams that I'd much rather take when they're playing at home. They have some nice wins on the road this season, but we also saw them go at Colorado State last time out and lose that game by 13 points. And in this matchup, I think Utah State is a big advantage in the two-point field goal department. Utah State scores a lot of its points from two-point field goals in the paint, mid-range jumpers, a 57.4% shooting percentage from two-point land. It's 11th best in the country. Boise State gives up a large majority of its points from two-point range. They're ranked 257th in two-point defense, and that's why Utah State was able to win that first matchup at Boise State in this season series because they were 23 of 37 from two, 62% in that ball game. Uh, both of these teams know how to get to the free throw line. They did so in the first matchup, and while Boise State's playing with revenge, on the road, I don't think they get that revenge. I'm going to go with Utah State here for a nice bounce back, get right spot at home. And that's it. Those are the games for Saturday in College Hoops. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Put your college basketball picks in the comment section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Romanelli. Good luck.